Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very fascinating topic of silicon-based life. And a new research that unfortunately seems to suggest that silicon-based life might not actually be possible. But we're going to talk about some of the discoveries in this particular paper and also what it might mean for our search for extraterrestrial life out there. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odemath. <laughs> When I first heard about silicon-based life when I was younger, the first thing that came to mind was the famous pet rock. This was a fad that started, I think, around 1975 when a person started selling rocks found on one of the beaches in California and even had the little holes in the box for the pet rock to breathe. It was essentially a joke, but a lot of people bought these rocks and this guy became a millionaire. Some of you might also be familiar with a lot of science fiction that deals with the idea of rock-based or silicon-based life, such as the very interesting story called The Talking Stone by famous Isaac Isimov. So this idea of rock-based or silicon-based life has kind of always been in our psyche, in our mind. But one of the reasons it's not pure science fiction and why it is technically possible and why it's been investigated scientifically many times is really because of the chemical similarities between carbon that you see right here and silicon that's essentially in the same group as carbon and has a lot of very very similar properties. So for example, even though the atomic number for silicon and carbon is a little bit different, they possess a lot of similarities when it comes to bonding with other atoms. They both have what's known as tetravalency, or basically ability to create four different bonds. And here's a good example. This is a molecule known as silene with two silicates and four hydrogens. And here's a very similar molecule with carbon replacing silicates. So because of this unusual chemical similarity and the ability of silicates to create somewhat similar elements, many scientists uh, have always thought that maybe somewhere out there silicate life could be possible. But chemically speaking, how do we even define life here on Earth? Well, all of the life we have right now on the planet is carbon-based, and carbon is responsible for all of the structural and metabolic structure of every life organism on the planet, with water acting as a very important solvent for all of these carbon-based uh, activities, with DNA and RNA molecules acting as a kind of an instruction booklet defining and controlling the activity of both carbon molecules and water. But technically speaking, water can be replaced by another solvent and carbon activities can be replaced by silicates. So for example, for many years scientists speculated that on Titan, the moon of Saturn, there could be some sort of an exotic ethane and methane based life where instead of water, the life, possibly organic life, is actually using ethane and methane that are liquid on this beautiful object that have replaced water in its activity to act as a solvent. So even though this life could also still be organic, it might be using a different solvent instead of water. And several different experiments even tried to do this in a lab by trying to replace water with ethane and methane, and they did actually have some positive effects in being able to replicate certain organic molecules. But what about replacing organic molecules with silicate molecules? For example, we know that silicates can create a lot of various compounds, a lot of them very different, they can also create very large molecules that can technically transport a lot of different information needed for life, and some of these molecules could even hypothetically carry biological function as well. So because of the ability of silicates to create so many various compounds, there has always been a lot of speculation about the possibility of so-called silicate-based life. But there are still a lot of problems with this assumption and a lot of them have been very thoroughly addressed in this new study that addresses a lot of really minute details and establishes once and for all the ability for silicate life to exist, for example here on planet Earth or in similar conditions. For example, one of the major problems with silicon as opposed to carbon is that it's actually not able to create as many diverse molecules as carbon can. And one of the main reasons behind this is because the atom itself is slightly larger, yet its bonds are slightly shorter than carbon. In other words, it's much larger an atom than carbon, and it has much shorter arms to reach to other atoms and other molecules to form these complex bonds. So unfortunately, it's not able to create as much diversity here on planet Earth as carbon. And this kind of a chemical versatility and ability to create various elements is absolutely crucial for successful metabolic life here on planet Earth. 
These atoms also have much more trouble forming double bonds, which are essential for various uh, organic and metabolic activities inside our bodies, and because they prefer to form single bonds, silicates are just very different from carbon when it comes to all sorts of chemical reactions. And another major difference here is in regards to reactivity of silicates in the earthly conditions. In the presence of oxygen and in the presence of water on the planet, the actual free silicate atoms tend to not form any organic molecules and instead prefer to form all sorts of different silicate rocks instead. So in oxygen conditions of planet Earth, silicates prefer to form rocks and not complex organic-like molecules that would help life to evolve. But the biggest factor here and the biggest paradox is why is it that we have no silicate life on Earth at all? If you really think about it, it's actually a kind of a paradox, because silicates are very, very common on the planet, but carbons are not. By relative abundance, there are about 925 times more silicate atoms than there are carbon atoms. In other words, our planet is actually exceptionally silicate rich, but very carbon poor. Yet, the life on our planet evolved to be carbon based. This is a huge paradox. If silicate life was possible, why couldn't it have formed on the planet and why is it that silicates do not form any organic molecules or any other molecules that are capable of sustaining and evolving life? So because all of the life on our planet is carbon based and there's nothing silicate based, it kind of already presents a very interesting point in that it's probably impossible, at least for Earth-like planets, to form any silicate based life at all. But that's not to say that silicates are not used for life. As a matter of fact, uh, the so-called biogenic silica are very common. In this picture right here, you're looking at so-called diatoms. These are very, very tiny creatures that use silicates for their structure. Their skeletal structure is entirely made out of silicate matter, and so in some sense, some creatures on the planet have actually evolved to use silicates and not carbons for various functions. And in this case, for structural reasons, it seems to create better and more stable structures that are able to protect and sustain these creatures better than carbon could. But nevertheless, this does not change the fact that it's not truly a silicate-based life. These creatures are still organic, they're still predominantly carbon-based, and also need water and, of course, DNA, RNA to survive and to evolve. Silicate atoms are just sort of a tool that they use to get better at what they already do. So it does seem like on planet Earth and in earthly conditions, silicate life would really not be possible. But what about other planets or other objects or other conditions where silicates and of course carbon could actually act very differently? For example, we know that certain objects, like even Titan right here, do not really possess as much oxygen as they possess carbon. And some of these objects might help silicates to start forming different bonds or not be as reactive with oxygen and instead have reactions that could be somehow similar to the reactions that carbon has here on planet Earth. For example, one of the suggestions is that a typical silicon-based material can be more stable if instead of water, it actually uses the solvents similar to the ones on Titan. Here we're talking about ethane and methane. But the problem with Titan is that it's also extremely cold here, and the experiments that try to recreate the conditions on Titan and also use silicates for ethane and methane as a solvent were not extremely uh, productive. Basically, it showed that silicates don't really make any better molecules and react very well in these really cold conditions. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have objects like Venus. And Venus is not just hot, but it also possesses a lot of sulfuric acid, which does seem to create more stable conditions for silicate-based molecules. In other words, if instead of water, an object such as, I guess in this case, Venus, possessed a lot of sulfuric acid and silicates, there is then a chance that certain very similar molecules, very stable molecules, could be produced here, similar to planet Earth. Although right now, it's only a suggestion. Not enough experiments have been conducted to see how stable silicates are in these conditions and what sort of molecules they do produce. However, if sulfuric acid is a good solvent for silicate-based life, we have at least two objects to investigate, Venus and the moon of Jupiter known as Io that you can see right here. Both are very rich in sulfuric acid, both also have quite a lot of silicates on the surface, and this could create a very good opportunity for us to discover silicate-based life somewhere in the solar system. But except for water, sulfuric acid, 
uh, ethane and methane, there's at least one more solvent that could potentially create conditions that might produce silicate life. This uh, element is known as methanol. It's a polar compound very similar to water, and it also stays liquid up until about 65 degrees Celsius. So in that sense, it would be liquid in Earth-like conditions. And unlike ethane and methane, it would not need these super cold conditions to stay liquid, and thus hypothetically could create lakes and oceans where silicate life could maybe evolve. But right now, we also don't really know much else about how silicates react with methanol, and all of this is very hypothetical and very theoretical. We don't know if silicates would actually prefer to be in uh, methanol, and we don't even know what kind of elements they'll create with time and if it's going to be anything similar to the complexity of carbon and water. But the analysis in this particular paper goes through a lot of other solvents and a lot of other possibilities for life to be created with silicates, and unfortunately what it discovers at the end is that silicate-based life would just not have as many opportunities and as many chances to create the diversity we see on planet Earth with organic life, water, and the nitrogen-based RNA-DNA molecules that we have. So it would be extremely difficult to recreate the complexity of metabolic reactions that we have inside our bodies or inside even simpler organisms here on planet Earth. And even though silicates can still be used by other life for certain functions, such as diatoms that I mentioned previously that use it for structural reasons, the chance for silicon to be the foundation of life and to be the actual basis for it is now extremely low. It's very, very unlikely that any kind of silicate life exists anywhere out there, unless, of course, silicates start acting a lot more like carbons here on Earth in presence of other conditions such as sulfuric acid and much hotter environments. Nevertheless, what is most interesting about the paper here and about the discoveries regarding silicates is that there's a very high chance that certain silicates, specifically clay minerals, may have actually kickstarted or helped kickstart life on planet Earth. This hypothesis, known as the clay world, suggests that early life may have used early silicates and early clays to kind of help itself with various chemical reactions, such as the interaction with nitrogen, for example, and a lot of other activities that are pretty common today. In other words, maybe silicates were important for the kickstarting of life, but they just never really became life itself. They were just another tool that was used for life to become very common on the planet. And this is not very unusual because, for example, calcium has been used by various types of life for billions of years now as a type of a structural element as well. So it wouldn't be unusual that silicates were used in similar manners. But this would not really be silicate life. It would just be regular organic carbon life that used silicate for its own purposes. And so to conclude, well, it does look like silicate life might not be possible, at least in the conditions we're used to. There still might be a chance for it to exist on, for example, Venus and maybe even Titan, but just judging by the chemical reactions we tried to recreate here on Earth, it is very unlikely that we're ever going to discover a type of a life that, I guess in some sense, can really become our pet rock. And the wonderful authors of this paper go in a lot more detail about why they think that silicate life is just not going to be possible. Anyway, check out the paper in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and of course, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.